The Philippines is a very uh, climate vulnerable country by virtue of its geographic location. So we are more than 7,100 islands. We're situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So there are so many um, um, islands and seas and mountains. So that makes us really, really prone to whatever um, climate um, disruption that there is. And um, in terms of our people, uh, the Philippines has been classified as a middle-income country, which means, you know, we are neither rich nor poor, but just right. But then, if you would look at the level of inequality within our country, then that's where you will see that a lot of our people, despite the supposed claims of economic growth, are actually um, very poor and very, very uh, um, hard up in terms of their livelihood. So whatever um, climate uh, disturbance sister would be uh, would naturally have more impact on the poor people of course you know for a country like us the reality is women have triple burdens you know we tend to the family we tend to our livelihoods and when there are problems like disasters um, 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 climate um, climate um, phenomena usually we, we sacrifice ourselves first so that you know we can take care of the family in terms of uh, who gets to eat whatever whatever little food there is in the house who gets evacuated so it's usually the women who assume such uh, additional burden I think it's very important to look at adaptation from the point of view of defending our livelihoods. Now, because a lot of the problems right now is rooted in inequalities in our society. So climate change is just an additional layer, you know, one more layer to already fundamental problems in our society. So if you will say that um, how do you adapt, I think there is no adapting to the impacts of climate change because you know one can never really replace you know the loss of lives and livelihoods especially of your family but in in cases where it does happen then I suppose um, genuine adaptation for us would mean that we would have to defend our livelihoods our lands you know our way of life so I think that's really, really important to highlight. And in terms of what kind of development we would need, we would need uh, development that does not only look at you know the outside trappings. We have nice buildings, we have uh, golf courses, but development that would really answer the fundamentals. You know? Is there a roof over our heads? Is there food on the table? Are we able to send our children to school? Is there security when we sleep at night? These are the important questions. And I think for many uh, families in the Philippines, that is what development should look like. Um, I think um, people have the right to migrate. People have the right to mobility. What is not right is when they are forced to migrate because of situations that are beyond their control. So it's a totally different thing. Um, of course, it would be good if we are um, able to respond or address the issue of climate change so that there would be no more climate migrants or no more uh, the phenomenon of people having to live because they are being displaced and dislocated. That's an ideal world. But given the reality of climate change, I think the UN would now have to seriously look at the root causes of uh, uh, migration due to climate reasons. No? So why, why are people um, forced to move out? It's because there's no food, there's no water. So they should really look into those questions seriously and try to address it. And in cases where there are disasters, then they should also look at the whole picture of um, how do you now provide for safe, orderly uh, transit of uh, masses of people. Well, everyone is saying the Paris Agreement will save the world from climate change. I don't believe it because um, we see that everything here is voluntary. So it doesn't add up to what science tells us is needed. It doesn't add up in terms of what justice tells us needs to be done. And that would be, what would be the 
uh, responsibility and the actions of uh, rich developed countries to address climate change. So here in Bonn right now, we are seeing the same situation all over again. It's been almost two years since the Paris Agreement was um, adopted and uh, applauded. Uh, but then we see now that the governments are still fighting it out with each other. Just what do we mean? Just what did we mean when we said we will address climate change in Paris? Now, so sticky issues like who's going to provide the money? Um, where will it come from? Now, these are things that um, if you do not uh, have enough clarity and agreement, even though you have a very nice uh, <laughs> decision, if there is no money, if there is no resources, then nothing will uh, come out of it substantially.